What is up, peeps? Follow in TCG and I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And I am very much indeed back up and rolling, ready to go, trying to show you, if I can speak English, a brand new deck list. This deck list was actually sent in to me from Giraffe Neck Mark, who uh, I'll leave his Twitter down below. Um, he's a very active follower on my Twitter and also a very active viewer. I'm, I'm sure you're watching this. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for sending me the deck list. I have actually decided to change it up a little bit. Put my own little spin on it. His deck list originally had some um, like some potions in there and stuff like that. But I thought I wanted to just change it up a bit again, um, just to kind of fit my style of play. Um, like he had a just one Orangu. I've thrown in two. I've done four Nespo instead of three. Um, and this deck seems to be running pretty well. Um, but yeah, I was, I'll leave a, um, a, a list, of course, in the description down below for you to check out if you do want to try it out for yourself. Um, but yeah, um, now I think there's a few things I want to address. First off, um, Thank you so much for your support. Uh, let me just turn this down quickly. Uh, thank you so much for your support um, in the, the video that I uploaded uh, addressing why I stopped uploading for this short period of time, um, which happened to be around Christmas time. So I guess it was a bit more excusable considering the time of year. Um, but yeah, the support you guys left me in the comments um, and, and people in real life that have spoken to me and helped me out. Um, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. And it really helped me um, kind of just uh, keep going uh, and really want to get back onto this channel and really get a video out. Like, I'm so excited to be back. I really am. Um, a huge thank you to my friend Bailey. Um, I'll leave his Twitter down below as well, which is, oh dang, it's Bailey. You can give him a follow. He is the very reason why you're seeing my face at this angle. He actually gave me a webcam, uh, which he no longer uses um, for his channel. And his main reason was he, he just, he believes in my channel and he wants to support it. So it's extremely heartwarming um, that he went out of his way to give me that. Um, and yes, Bailey, I am still aware of your present. Don't worry, I'm just <laughs> bundle a little low. <laughs> um, right, let's just do that. And I really want to get another fan pee out, but I think we're just going to pass for the time being. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so so that's why I've got this webcam now. And that's fantastic because I can uplo upload much faster. I, can I don't need to render the videos anymore. I can just record upload uh, thanks to OBS. So I get to be able to just record upload and it just makes it a lot faster, a lot easier to get out, which means videos will be a lot more consistent. Um, there will be a face cam in every single video for the foreseeable future now. Um, and there won't be like weird issues where the camera cuts off from the 20 minute mark in every video if you go back and check it does on the 20 minute mark every single time it cuts out so it just eradicates those little issues and it makes my life so much easier so again thank you so much and uh, the situation itself is uh, coming to a close uh, or is already at a close technically speaking so I just want to uh, move forward focus onwards uh, on the channel and um, really give you guys what you want um, because I've, really, I've even noticed as I've not been uploading, I've still been gaining subscribers at a, a, a larger, a more considerable level than I was way before I started doing the, the daily videos. Um, so I know there's a lot of you people that are new and just really want to see something. So I really want to get back to it. And here we are. Now, I hope there's no issues with the video itself. Um, I, if I've uploaded it, then obviously not. So <laughs> that's uh, not something I really need to speak about, considering that the video you're going to see is a perfectly fine one. Uh, we're up against Hippocephalon. Now, this deck is really fun. Uh, this uh, this Don fan deck, um, considering that as long as you set it up, um, it just it just functions really well. Now the the biggest issue I had with the deck when I first heard of Don fan um, becoming a bit more of a considerable card to play, I was sitting there going, yeah, but two energy attachments just to be able to attack, it just it felt a bit wrong. I was like, doesn't doesn't really sit right with me. But for the simple fact that well, unfortunately, this is not going to happen now because of this burn. Um, for the simple fact that the Don fan is almost impossible to knock out if it's on full HP, which uh, now I understand why you've put in the, uh, the the potions to accommodate for this small damage, um, this small amount of damage that we go and take. Okay, damage is increasing. Okay, yes, yeah, it's choice band. Right, I'm just uh, trying to think here. I kind of want to play the power pad now just to thin, um, but that doesn't seem right. So I think we're just going to Cynthia. Hope we hit a DCE. Um, Don Van can hit some really, really, really good numbers, um, especially with the likes of Shrine. We are kind of whiffing here, though, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I think I'm going to go down this route here, get another Fan P out. I always thought it was called Fan Fee, Fan Fan Fee, Fan Fee, as in P A P H A N P H Y. That's what I thought it was. Uh, but no, it's Fan P. <laughs> you learn something new every day. We could actually, we could switch and then use Fan P's Endure. So the super coin of heads, this Pokemon's not tough from a damage and attack, and it suddenly becomes 10 HP. We could do that. 
Or we could... No, no, no. We want to keep that... Free. We want a fresh Donphan out. That burn really, really stopped uh, our strategy for the active Donphan. So if you don't know the strategy of what this Donphan does, it has the ability sturdy. Whereas if the HP is full, which unfortunately it's not right now, if the HP is full, then... Uh, when it's KO'd, it goes down to 10 HP, and that works great with Last Chance Potion, which of course is heal 120 damage from any Pokemon that's 30 HP or less. So this Don Fan just stays alive for a very long time if you can chain these things correctly. Um, and Rolling Spin does 70, uh, plus 70 um, onwards from there on out. It doesn't stack up 70, 70, 70, 70. It just like 70 plus 70 more during the next turn. So it does 70 at the start, and then 140, 140, 140, 140. Um, as it remains in the active position, which is what you're going to be doing with it, of course, when you're using Sturdy and Last Chance Potion. You're going to keep the one Donphan in the active. So you'll be hitting very big numbers with Diancy, 140 turns to 160, plus a Choice Band, that's 190, plus Shrine of Punishment between the two turns, that's 210. So um, it can definitely really rake, uh, rake up the big numbers. So this Donphan is surviving, and we actually get to use Last Chance Potion just because he did not KO the Donphan. That is... Fantastic. So we get to use the last chance, which is great. I want to, I kind of want to switch here um, just to get an extra Oranguru pool. And I kind of, I'm kind of fine with that. I know we have the choice band there, but the extra pool could really, really help. Especially if we pull a DCE or something, which we do. So I don't know which order that came in. So that switch really could have, really could have gone a long way. So yeah, here we are now. This Donphan is going to be doing its work. Now it's full HP, so no matter what, Unless they have some sort of way to do some burn or something. I don't know. I don't think they do. No matter what, this Donphan is staying alive. Which means we get an extra turn for energy attachment. Which is leading yeah, leading on to the point I wanted to originally say. I was really, you know, iffy going, ah, two energy attachment plus a DCE requirement to attack. It's just a bit too much. But considering Donphan, its durability is really good. And it works with a last chance potion. You have a lot of time to just manually attach your energy and set up. But you have a ton of time and a ton of turns to do that. So you never really have a struggle of, of getting your energies on this Donphan to attack. So yeah, again, thank you, uh, Draftnet Mark, for uh, just bringing this to light to me. Um, I know it had a bit of a, a shout out before, I believe from PTCG Radio, I'm not too sure. Um, but I didn't really take much notice, but this is definitely something I want to consider. If there's any decks that you want to show me, the best thing to do is just get through to me on Twitter. Um, you can either at me or if you follow me, I might follow back. And if I do, then you can just go for the DM. So they're actually going to go for the burn confusion because I think they've recognized the strategy, um, which is kind of smart um, because now we don't have that ability activated. Now, if we really want to be that guy, we could max potion, <laughs> but then they're just going to go for another burn. Um, uh, hmm. I kind of still want to do a rolling spin and we actually get the KO if we do it. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to attach and then get one pull. Come on, we got to flip heads. We got to flip heads. Another fan P. I'm fine with that. Come on, flip heads and we get the KO. <laughs> ha! Hell yeah, there we go. So, thank God. Um, now, it looks like they don't have any. No, they don't even have a single Bicephalon down, which is fantastic because the biggest issue with Bicephalon is it's two energy to attack. Which is really rough, um, considering that if you don't have one down, you have to attach for turn and then just wait. You either use your GX attack or you go for the burn confusion. But it's, it's quite awkward. The best way to beat a Blacephalon is, uh, is usually with control decks. <laughs> because you can you know stick up the Mars Shadow, which requires an energy attachment to retreat. Um, or you can you know stick up a Blacephalon with no energy on it and then just start milling the energies on the other Pokemon, like the Naganados or other Blacephalons. Um, oh, we have activated Beast Ring, though. I completely forgot about that one. But that's perfectly fine. Um, again, they have to now, in order to actually be able to, to, to compete, they have to be able to take a turn to go for the Bursting Burn, right? They have to do that just to uh, be able to KO the Don Fan without risking a Last Chance Potion. So, um, it just gives us a few extra turns again just to keep charging up, which is fantastic. So, I'm kind of happy about that. So yeah, Donphan is good. It is definitely, I'm actually really surprised with how good it works. Um, it's pretty neat. Plus this one, I, I wanted to leave in the, um, I wanted to kind of keep the deck as original as it was from what it was sent in through to me from Mark. Um, and it had like a uh, an enhanced hammer and a crushing hammer. And I'm assuming the reason he put that in there was to just help with uh, slowing the opponent down whilst you set up. Um, so I'd love to be able to use that, uh, you know, some point in this game. Now, obviously, the beast energy is down, so we won't be able to use the enhanced hammer, but using the likes of a crushing hammer on a Blacephalon could really slow them down. 
So I'm quite happy with that. Now then discarding three energies just to knock out a single price Pokemon must feel just awful. It must feel really, really bad. Right, so I've kind of want to Ultra Ball here for a Diancy. Um, oh, no, we don't need to Ultra Ball. We've got the Nest Ball for it. Oh, we don't have it. That's a shame. Right, but might as well take the opportunity to get the fan peak down. And we will attach to the active. We won't attach to the bench because we do need to attack this turn. Um, uh, a part of me wants to Ultra Ball to Thin um, so we can draw into a draw support next turn. And I think that's what I'm going to do. We have like eight energy in the deck. So I think we are okay getting rid of that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have two more energy. So that's fine. I think we should be okay there. And just get a Don fan. Uh, to be fair, it would have been better to get another Oranguru just to add the extra potential draw. But we'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. We'll go for the Instruct. Why not? Let's see what we get. We get a Crushing Hammer. So this could really be good. And it failed. But that's fine. Here we are. We are here. We really need a draw supporter to make sure that we, um, you know, pull into these last chance potions. I think we've only had the one. And this is why I added the two Oranguru. Why I added the Pal Pad in there. Because... You, sometimes you just really, really, really need the last chance potion. You know, there's that one term and you're like, okay, this is my moment. So you really need to get it. Um, so that's why the extra draw um, through Pal Pad by getting the draw supporters back and also make, you know, almost guaranteeing you're going to have an Oranguru out all the time um, is something that's important. Now, he did actually play a Gladian. Um, now, I'm assuming that's either to get the Diancy or to get the Orangurus if needed. Um, or enhance hammers or anything down that line just to have those options if they're prized. Um, oh, damn, we didn't lose the burn. But, uh, oh, what do I do here? I don't want to Guzman and retreat. That feels horrible. We're just going to have to attach there and uh, have to just flip another heads. Uh, yeah, let's flip another heads on the rolling spin. Ah, oh, we failed. That's a shame. So they, now they can knock us out. But... Um, luckily enough, we did get the attachments. So we really, really, really need to find um, an energy. So, yeah, the fact that they have to go for the Bursting Burn, again, gives us a turn to attach. So, again, we don't have to, like, stream attacks very quickly. The issue when it comes to decks like this, where they have is, is, a, is a low HP, either basic or low HP stage one, um, one prize Pokemon... They're very easily knocked out. So the fact that they're easily knocked out means you have to be able to keep up um, and be able to attack, attack, attack every turn effectively just to keep up with these big hitting GX decks, right? Um, that's why Shrine is so crucial because it helps with that. Um, but if you can't do that, then the deck will probably fail. That's why decks that require the awkward two energy attachment do tend to struggle a lot more. Uh, when it comes to decks that, you know, require a single energy attachments or have energy acceleration like Malamar decks. Um, and that's kind of the philosophy behind playing these, these, these uh, I would call them tier two decks. As, you know, they can rival tier one decks, but they're not like best decks in the format, if you know what I'm saying. Um, although, don't take my word for it. This deck could literally just come out of nowhere and be like, yep, yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> uh, now, I didn't anticipate drawing the... The energy, so I kind of would have preferred to goose. Actually, wait, no, no. Why would I say that? Yeah, we want to take this Blacephalon. Down. down you go. Get out of here. Get out of here. 100 damage. Sweet. Some prize cards there. Uh, they are on the four prizes still, so they don't get to hit the 160 with the Naganado, which is fantastic. Um, we, do, again, get another turn to try and find a draw supporter because we are just here. Look at look at our... Look at this. We just have Guzma, Guzma, Guzma. <laughs> Uh, right, so they're going to take out the fan P, which is fair. That's quite fair. But we can get another one down? No, we can't. We're actually out. We're out of fan P's. Um, I did... F I, I think I did. I should have thrown a rescue stretcher in this deck. If not, we're in trouble. We're in very, very, very big trouble. So, but I think I did. I could be so wrong. <laughs> I could be so wrong. And that's going to be horrible. Um, right, what do we... Yeah, okay, let's let's find out if we actually just... Let's just find out if we have the rescue stretcher. We don't, so that's not at all good. So maybe a rescue stretcher would be a good shout um, in this list, thinking about it. Especially considering that this Don Fan is pretty much KO'd next turn, but... ha, oh, last chance. Yeah, last chance potions. Sweet. Okay, let's get these Cynthia's back so we can just keep drawing. And we'll go for the rolling spin, and they can KO us, but that's fine. We got the last chance, and we have the uh, sturdy ability, so 
this is where it comes in handy. To be fair, I don't think I think we've only done the last chance potion once this game, and we play four. Um, and that's what makes this deck so cool is it's it just it survives so well and does so much damage at the same time um that's really tough so i really don't like the rolling spin now the great thing is is we can just um go into that naganadal there with guzmo and knock it out which would you know prevent the free prize oh wait, no no what i'm talking about it's free prizes on their end they don't actually hit 160 now but i want to take this thing out so we're going to do that we are going to do that with the Guzma for sure. Uh, I kind of want to throw an energy here because we might have to end up attacking with a Ranguru. Um, we're very tight, very tight, but I think we've got this. Just looking at where this is going, their Bercephalons went down so easily that just because they had to take the turns, oh, hi, Dancy, just because they had to take the turns to do their Bursting Burn rather than going for the Mind Blow attack, really slowed them down really slowed them down so the one thing this deck is very very weak to is uh, decidui uh, not only is it weak to grass but it's also uh, feather arrow just shuts off its ability and uh, so considering one of the big decks right now is decidui nine tail swamper it's definitely that in my opinion that's probably what's stopping it from becoming a fantastic deck um is just the the, the weakness and the uh the susceptibility to spread damage and uh you know, bench damage, which is quite prevalent right now. All right, so awkwardly, we don't get the last chance potion, but we've got, we got the game. Yeah, we've got the game. What am I talking about? Let's go for rolling spin here and get the KO for a nice 160. So being able to hit 160 every turn is so cool, um, and I am in love with it. So let's go for, we'll go for another one, which we can do now. Thank you, Bailey. <laughs> we can just roll in another one. Uh, so let's do that. Now, I do have quite a lot of coins. Um, I'm saving up for tag team. Um, because I can't guarantee my financial situation to make sure I can, you know, buy packs so I can give, uh, you know, I can make a pack opening video or make sure I can make the decks, including the new stuff when it does come out in February. I believe it's February 2nd, is it? It's the first Friday in February, I know that, when Tag Team comes out. So, um, I want to make sure that I can, if I can't afford anything in real life, considering it is like, I think like a week or so after my son's birthday. So, um, I can at least, I, I'd save up the coins now for at least two months and um, just purchase a bunch of tag team packs in the online game to make sure that I do get the cards I need to make these, some extra fun decks and, and keep doing what I want to do. So unfortunately, I don't have an unlocked account, so I can't just go, hey, new set, let's do everything. I have to obviously get all the packs and stuff um, to be able to, to keep up with the fresh ideas. But I'm committed. I'm committed to that, and uh, I'm excited, super excited. Right, turn one Lily, which is quite common in this deck now. This deck actually plays Sightseer. Uh, do I want to drop the shrine? Oh, please don't tell me we're getting Decidueye Nine Tails. Do I drop the shrine now? Mm. Yeah, they've had their turn one, so they can evolve into Nine Tails. Now, something's telling me this is not Decidueye Nine Tails. This is probably Swamper with the other Nine Tails, Alona Nine Tails GX, the water type that does some spread, which is quite concerning because we don't like that. We do not like that. So I do understand the inclusion of the potions, of course, just to counter Decidueye a little bit. Um, and we do play one of one tech of max potion, which I decided to keep in because I think I understand why that exists. It's just to reactivate the sturdy ability, which gives you more time. So if you have a Don fan in the active that has no energy on it already, then you can just max potion that to reactivate your sturdy ability just to give you an extra turn um, of, of setting up. Okay, so they do play the baby nine tails. Understood, understood. Okay, that's not good considering what's going on in our hand right now. Um, I'm going to do this just to thin my hand, but really there's no reason for it. Um, we could go for a Guzma here. And bring this up. What's that attack? Search three or one energies and build them. Now we could go for endure, but that's just really risky. I'd just rather throw this one up. Then go for the endure with the, with the fan feed that has all the stuff on it. Considering that they probably got a swamp put next turn. Um considering that they did search for a nine tails and a swamp put. Guesses there is a um a red candy in hand. Yeah. Although to be fair, it's a bit weird that they search for the nine tails, considering they already had the red candy, but this is the great thing about Lone Nine Tails GX is you can just search for anything. You can just get two nest balls if you want and then just set up your board. Um, you know, you don't have to go for the rare candies. So I think Nine Tails has a lot more use that people aren't really focusing on right now because people are like, oh my god, rare candy. 
I can get it whenever I want. Stage two, stage two, stage two. Rather than going, yeah, but then you can nest ball, you can ultra ball, you can get all these other crazy item cards that can really help. Um, like I, We could if we wanted to, which we're not because we're, this is a shrine deck. We could play nine tails just to grab our last chance potions when we need. Or um, Also, one thing that's great is this a lot of nine tails can work in mill tank, you know, being able to grab your uh, moo moo milks and stuff like that. So there's so much use for this. No wonder it's a very expensive card. <laughs> um, because it's just a really, really good card. Right. They are going to KO me. And we have no um, ways of thinning our hands right now. We need a draw supporter, which is why I kind of wanted to get that power pad done earlier. We're, we're banking on it. We're like, we're hoping we drop it. We top like something good here. Oh, we don't. But we have the enhanced hammer. But I have to attach an energy. Just so. Mm. Okay, I'm going to attach it on the Diancy. No, Fanpy. Just to pull one. One top deck. Please, give me something good. A Guzma. I will take it. I'll take it. We'll... Oh, this is tough. Okay. First off, why did they discard the double colorless and how did they do that? Was I. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. I stopped playing for like two weeks and then I'm sitting here forgetting that I played my enhanced hammer. <laughs> okay. I want a Guzma just to buy me some time. This one? But they can beacon. But then this one? But they could go for like the snowy wind. Okay. Beacon is kind of less scary. So we're just going to do that. Just wait. I'm perfectly fine waiting. We just I need to hope they don't have some sort of like, you know, play of DCE Guzma and then bang, Swamper, which would feel bad. Okay, Elms Lecture. So they've played that supporter, which means they're currently going to hold their hand. Uh, they're probably going to Elms Lecture Beacon. That's going to be my guess, which is quite smart. Oh, you've got yourself Solgaleo in here, huh? I'm assuming this is the, the promo Solgaleo that uses the DCE to go for, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, with this much stage twos, that's kind of crazy. But then, to be fair, the reason why uh, these stage two decks work so well is just because of this thing. <laughs> that's all it is. And to be fair, Swampert plays a huge role. The reason why Swampert plays a huge role is because it just draws into rare candies, like, so easily. Right, so just top deck a supporter. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. At least you're seeing the worst of the deck now. So you saw the best earlier. Now you're seeing the worst. So um, This deck can definitely have some tough times. Fingers crossed we find a way out of this. Um, but I don't know. The smart thing for them to do is just to Guzma that Fampy. Because that's all I have. Like I'm just holding on to that right now. So they can Guzma that thing up. Then it would just be pretty much the end. So fingers crossed that's not the case. I really don't want that to be the case. <laughs> I really don't. Um, so they're going for another switch and then a rare candy. Yep, so they're getting everything they need there. So they're going to get Solgaleo out, I assume. So was it the Solgaleo that I thought it was? Was it the promo? It doesn't look like it. It is. Yeah, so the Turbo Strike Solgaleo. Which... Oh, that there. <laughs> which is quite a cool Pokemon. No weakness. 120 damage. Ah, oh, it's a fantastic Pokemon. Okay, so there's the... Attack, so we really, really need a Don fan or just a way to draw. Diancy going down is not ideal. Now, I don't know if this deck is actually like a, a tournament deck because it seems to have a really good synergy to it. Oh, no. We're going to have to endure here. Oh, we got the endure. All right. Okay. So we're going to have to endure, which means we get to use last chance potion on a fanpy. <laughs> Which is not the best, but that's 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 just where we're at. Oh, so we're gonna goose my up the rank. Oh, this is just disgusting. <laughs> yeah, this is horrible. Like we have to drop top deck a draw supporter like soon. No, we play like eight of them. No, we play like ten. I think we play four Cynthia, four Lilies, and two Sightseers. I think we play a ton of draw support, and we just don't. All right, endure, please. Flip heads. If not, it's game. Ah, we hit heads. So there's no way out of it now. <laughs> this is like the last chance. I mean, our shrine is doing something at least, but this is uh, this is tough. We're just trying to top deck our way out of this. Yep, and do your thing. 
keep me alive. Thank you. Oh, oh done fair. Oh, wait. Last chance first. Yeah, last chance then, because otherwise that wouldn't have activated. And then we could done fair. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I swear to God, if we just start top decking some crazy stuff, that would be hilarious. I, I swear to God, if we make a comeback, I really don't think it's going to happen. Like, I'm going to be real with you. It's not going to happen. But you never know, man. Some crazy stuff can happen in the trading card game. So you do not know one bit. Okay. They're going to retreat. They're probably going to go for another turbo. Okay. Which makes sense. They still, yeah. I don't know, man. We, we, have, like, we have to max potion just to survive if we get nothing out of this. It's like we have to hit like a Cynthia. Like, come on, a Cynthia. Just a Cynthia. We still have all four of you in there. Okay, we could do something here. I'm going to get rid of these shrines considering they, they clearly don't have a counter stadium. We could do something. We have to just use a Rangura here to its best. Here, come on, just give me something. We're like hanging on from a thread here. Oh, that feels so bad. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, it's either I go for the rolling spin, which is going to hit 160. No, no. So it's going to hit 170. 170 plus 70. That's 240 plus shrine. So we actually get the KO here. So I really want to do this. This is stupid, but I'm going to do it. So that's... Am I, getting, am I doing the maths right? Yeah. So we actually get the KO, which is fantastic. Um... So, th there's still a chance. There's like, we still got a chance. We still have a chance. I might have to lose this Oranguru, which is bad. Uh, but we just need to... Oh, this is just scary stuff, man. This is like super scary. Are they going to goose with a fan? Are they going to goose with a fan pee? Oh, wow. Okay, they're really banking on... Oh, no. No, don't do this. <laughs> they're going to go for the snowy wind. Look at that. Gosh, that's a shame. That is a shame. I do think that's game. We're going to play it to the end. I mean, we've come this far. We're going to go to the end of it. We are going to go to the end. And uh, hope this Ra Ranguru doesn't get KO'd, which it is. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get KO'd. Let's be real. This Ranguru is going down. Um, and I don't think there's any way. I mean, we could, you know, get a switch off this Lily and then go for Endure, which is possible. Nope. I think that's game. I think all they got to do is retreat and then hit me with that. So, yeah, we're going to hit him with well played and uh, give him a little heart there and say they do have a good deck. So, um, yeah, that was fun for what it was. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go give them the game there. Unfortunately, we did just not set up right. We didn't get the nest balls out early on and we just didn't get it going. But, again, sometimes that can happen. Let me just show you the, de the deck list itself. But I will put a link to this particular list in the description down below. Here it is for you. Um, oh, we don't have Sightseer. So I actually removed the Sightseer. My bad. That was my bad. Now, when it comes to Sightseer, I just want to give my brief opinion on that. Oh, I hit my microphone. Um, I said it on Twitter. Sightseer is a card where it's like, unless you actually discard all the cards in your hand and draw fresh five, other than that, it's not really that good. Because either you draw four, which is pretty much a Sophocles. And in some cases, if you're going to have to discard more than two cards to draw four cards, then... Yeah, you're better off using Sophocles. And if it's draw three cards, then you're better off using How. So it's like, at that stage, Sightseer is only good if you are drawing five cards. If you're not drawing five cards, then it's it, it's only compared to the likes of Sophocles and, and How, which obviously are not seeing play. They're being outplayed by Lily. So I'm not too much of a fan of it unless I will, you know, commit myself to the discard draw five, which I don't think works in this deck because it seems like all the resources here are quite valuable. So I don't want to be discarding a lot of stuff. But yeah, um, as I said, I'll leave a link, to the, a link in the description to the list. And of course, do check out uh, DraftLink Mark, who did link me this. And as I said, just contact me on Twitter if you don't want me to try a deck list out. If I do find it entertaining and something that is worthwhile, I'll check it out, see if I can throw my spin on it. Um, or actually try out your list if it's the best list I can think of myself. So um, yeah, do of course leave a like if you did enjoy. Do share it with your friends. If you are interested in this Dawn fan list and you do want to discuss it. Um, but yeah, subscribe and I'll leave you to it. Do have a good one. Oh, yeah. Also, have a happy new year. Peace.